Mario Sana, who is the founder and director of the uh, Gruppo Odologico in Piacenza, Rome, Italy. He is an internationally uh, acclaimed otologist and neurotologist, uh, really pioneering um, many approaches. He does many of these large skull-based approaches uh, solo uh, without, uh, without neurosurgery. Um, he has been a tremendous mentor to me. Uh, tell you a little story, Mario, when we were sitting next to each other, having dinner in um, China. It was in China, yeah. yeah. It was in Shanghai on the Bund. Uh, when you taught me how to stop CSF from coming out of the nose after TransLab, and since then our CSF leak rates have gone almost to zero. So um, without further ado, uh, I wish to welcome Mario Sana and uh, look so forward as I always do to uh, hearing your lectures. Okay, did you listen? Yes, good. Okay, so what do you so lateral skull base to the petrus apex is a very special topic and I'm honored to present our experience to you. Uh, number. So as you know, the petrus apex is a, a pyramid shaped part of the central skull base, as you see with the red area. And it's based anteriorly to the labyrinth, the bony labyrinth, and lateral to the petro-occipital feature. This is, uh, I want to use this one. It doesn't work. Yeah, because... uh, how can I go on? Like, like this. Okay, anatomically, this petrus apex is surrounded by a complex neurovascular structures and the brain. Uh, clinically, the symptoms appear very late, uh, and the lesion tend to be more advanced. Surgically, it's very difficult to approach because of the very deep location to the base of the skull. So as you may understand, is absolutely necessary of understanding, a perfect understanding of the anatomy and the skull-based approaches to deal with such a lesion. Just, just an example, here this is the horizontal carotid artery, this is a prefontine system, this is a ventral, the ventral, the ventral artery. Uh, there are two compartments anatomically. One is a largely anterior triangle, that is there. This is one in the red. Here is the anterior foramen lacerum. This is the sixth cranial nerve. This is the V3, this is the horizontal portion of the carotid, this is the cochlea and the internal auditory canal. The smaller portion is quadrangular, this is that one, and it's between the trigeminal nerve, the gastrointestinal gas ganglion, V2, and then V3, and then this is the internal auditory canal with the cochlea very well dissected, this is the labyrinth, and then this is the triangular, the quadrangular area, and then this black is the inferior petrosal sinus. Uh, important structures that around the petrus apex that has to be taken into consideration is the internal carotid artery, this is the vertical portion, this is the genu, this is anterior foramen lacerum, this is the, this is the trigeminal nerve, this is the six cranial nerve, jugular bulb, and then this is the clivus. So it means that the cavernous sinus is just near, just anterior to the anterior foramen lacerum, and then it comprehends the cranial nerve third, four, six medially, and the brain stem and surrounded vascular postal medial uh, area. So the petrus carotid artery. This you can see here the vertical part is a beautiful dissection with the cochlea, the facial nerve, with the superficial petrosal nerve, the labyrinth. Here is the vertical portion of the carotid, the genu. You see how near is the carotid to the cochlea, to the cochlea, then this is the genu, and then this is the beginning of the horizontal portion. And just far anterior here, we have anterior foramen lacium that you can see in that section here, this is all the, all the carotid, anterior foramen lacium is there. And then just superiorly, you have cavernous sinus. And then here you see the 
precavernous area of the carotid that is crossed by the by the nerve you see here, and then the, the six cranial nerve. This is the prepontine system. So the gastrian ganglion is that one with the three branches, with three, with two, with one, and then this is the intracarot intracavernous carotid part. And then you see at the bigger magnification that that the trigeminal nerve this is the middle meningeal artery. This is the all the carotid here. This is the internal carotid, the internal auditory canal, and this is the cochlea. And here is the part of the bone that has to be removed when you want to remove tumor anteriorly to the internal auditory canal. At the bigger magnification, we can see the area. Big, this is the middle meningeal artery. This is through the middle fossa transpectal approach, the preauricular. And then this is the V3, V2, V1. Now at the fourth dissection, we can reach the basilar artery. This, this is the basilar artery. This is six contralateral nerve. This is six homolateral nerve. This is the ICA. And then it passes through the Dorellos canal. It crosses the carotid and it goes to the cavernous sinus, which is here. Here is the, the cavernous sinus almost completely dissected with the carotid inside. This is the precavernous area. This from here down, you have the intrapetus carotid. And then you see all the tract of the six cranial nerve through the posterior fossa, Tolelos canal, it crosses the carotid and it gets to the cavernous sinus. And here it has been removed all the bone, part of the climbers, the carotid vertical has been dissected. The pre-cavernous carotid is there. This is the five, uh, seven cranial nerve posterior displaced. This is the vertebral artery. This is the, this is the basal artery. And then this is the six contralateral nerve. So important structures, pica, ica, superior and inferior petrosal sinus. This is the inferior petrosal sinus and the carotid here internal auditory canal, middle fossa. This is the clivus. And then here you have the internal auditory canal. This is superior petrosal nerve. We have superior petrosal sinus here, inferior petrosal sinus. All this bone can be removed. And then you, once you remove it, we can get to the anterior superior part of the, of the brain stem, the cerebellum pontine angle, the brain stem. And then you can control here down to the Verte to the to the vertebral artery and to the pica. So, what are the pathologies that are presented in this area? Developmental pathologies like cholesteatoma and cephalocele, obstructive granular carcinoma or effusion, inflammatory petrous apicitis or osteomyelitis, and then benign tumors, meningioma, schwannoma, paraganglioma, and all the other tumors, malignant sarcoma, cordomas, fracture, and lesion that surround the area, like parotid and skull base, very extended tumors. What are now the surgical approaches that there is in our armamentarium in order to reach this very so difficult area? First of all, is middle fossa uh, with transpect with extension, adjust, and then retrolab, subtemporal, infratemporal, so just see each, each by one. Middle fossa with transpectus. The approach is pre-auricular, based on the zygomatic arch, and it permits to reach all the petrous apex, which is this area, and at the same time, the trigeminal nerve, it can control the low, the acoustic, uh, ca acoustic canal with the nerves, and then lateral part of the middle clival area. You see, this is the upper clivus, this is the middle clivus, this is the lower clivus. So the approach is preauricular, like this, a common question mark. And then, in order to dissect only this part, like for vestibular neurectomy or small intracanalicular tumor, it's necessary to remove all the bone between the posterior part of the internal auditory canal up to the superior semicircular canal, anteriorly to the cochlea medially to the carotid. So you see the approach is very large and it permits to remove tumors that are anteriorly located to the internal auditory canal, like for example, meningiomas. A further extension 
anteriorly. Once the middle meningeal artery has been cut, we can continue to dissect the carotid and to reach the genu, and then to reach the precavenous carotid and reach the three branches of the trigeminal nerve. This is a, a, the cadaveric dissection, this is the incision, then this is the craniotomy, and as you see, it's based on the zygomat arch. We can remove also this part of bone with the wrong gel in order to be tangential to the base of the skull and not to uh, compress the temporal lobe. One of the principles of the lateral skull base is remove the bone and leave the brain alone. So once the dura has been dissected, we go anteriorly. This uh, middle meningeal artery, greater and lesser trosal nerve. Then you see you can a, a superquad artery, uh, a superquad area. Um, uh, and then this part between the middle meningeal artery, the lesser and the greater petrosal nerve can be completely drilled. And there is, is a moot area. There's nothing here which can be dangerous. All this bone can be removed. And then you see, we have identified here the internal auditory canal, the posterior fossa dura, in order to reduce the pressure of the brain stem or the temporal lobe is necessary to do a very small opening of this dura, this blue area, and then the leaks start to come out and then the, the temporal lobe is completely released. You see here is posterior to the internal canal, this anterior to the canal, and then this, this bone, this quadrangular area, which is immediately to the, to the cochlea, anterior to the internal auditory canal. We cut the middle meningeal artery now, and then we coagulate that. You saw this a branch of external carotid. Then we might cut this necessary V3. This is a foramen ovalis, where the V3 comes out from, from, the base of, from the base of the skull. Once it has been cut, then you see we can remove all the petrous apex, cochlea, internal auditory canal, anterior foramen lacerum. Here is the carotid. All these bones, the spongy, spongy bone, can be removed and drilled out with a, a di large diamond drill. You see Peter's apex here is a spongy area. Once this has been removed, then you can get to the part of the clivus here. This is a carotid artery. And then you open the dura, the posterior fossa dura. This is the sixth cranial nerve. Then we continue. We remove this part of the dura and then we have a beautiful view. Anteriorly, this is the seven and eight cranial nerve. And then you see this part where meningiomas anterior to the forum, to the internal auditory canal are located. We can get also inferiorly, this is the cerebellum, the beautiful view you see that is the pica and the ica, this is the vertebral artery. And this is the basilar artery here, this is the ica six cranial nerve that cross the ica, cross the clivus, cross the petrous apex, and cross the carotid. And then it here it gets into the uh, cavernous sinus. What are now the indications? For example, dumbbell shaped tumor through the Meckel's cave here. So this is in the middle fossa, this is carotid, this is in posterior fossa, uh, and then this is uh, it, this can be removed in one stage with the preserving facial nerve, preserving the hearing. And then you see the post-op, you see there is no any lesions of the temporal lobe and not of the posterior fossa. Another indication, this one, is a Meckel's cave tumor, largely in the Meckel's cave here, partially in the posterior fossa. It reaches the clivus, and then you see just anterior to the internal auditory canal, and then this is the drawing of the tumor. We need to remove the tumor through the middle fossa transpetrus without, you see here the, the corridor uh, anterior to the, to the, to the petrous bone, uh, laterally to the zygomatic arch, all, all the corridor, it permits to remove the tumor without any damage of the brain. So what about the combined approach, retrolabyrinthine, subtemporal, transapical? This is all the approach that can be removed. And then always the principle, remove the bone and leave the brain alone. With this tumor, we can reach the mid clivus. You can reach the posterior fossa from the trigeminal nerve, six, 
down to the, to the internal auditory canal, it can be drilled all the middle part of the clivus. So we combine the approach you see, uh, retrolab transapical here, subtemporal here, and orbital zygomatic. So you see here, this is the approach, retroauricular, preauricular, up to the uh, superior to the, bra uh, the eye. We cut all these bones from the middle fossa together with the zygomatic arch. We leave the external auditory canal and the middle ear intact. We do an approach pre-sigmoid, retro-sigmoid, retrolab, subtemporal. Then you see here, this is the approach from the uh, tip of the mastoid, we go posteriorly, uh, just anteriorly. Then the external auditory canal is perfectly maintained intact. This is a temporalis muscle. This is the, the tissue um, of the mastoid. Then we identify all the bone that can be removed. This is the middle, this is the tip of a mastoid, external auditory canal. All this bone must be removed. And then once it's been removed, we do mastoidectomy, incus, labyrinth, patient nerve. Then craniotomy, very large craniotomy, in order to follow the principle, remove the bone and leave the brain alone. Remember, that's very fundamental in order to avoid any damage of the brain. You see how large is the approach. It goes from retro orbital, you saw it all to the middle fossa, sigmoid sinus, here the labyrinth intact, the external auditory canal intact. Then in the middle in the middle fossa, this is medial meningeal artery, grittel superficial petrons and nerve. We cut the middle meningeal artery. Then we cut the V3, this is the V3. And then you see this foramen ovalis. Then once the V3 has been cut, then all the tissue the, uh, go, goes down. And then you see the approach, beautiful approach. Here, you see the posterior fossa, sigmoid sinus, jugular bulb, labyrinth, incus, and then in the middle fossa. This is the Petrus apex. And then we go here, we identify the, the cochlea, this is the labyrinth, and then grit the superficial petrosa nerve. This is the part of the carotid. And then here is the middle fossa, the posterior fossa dura, and then the, the clivus. Then we open the dura medially to the superior petrosa sinus, posteriorly to the labyrinth, this is the endolymphatic sac, this is the jugular bulb, and you see what how beautiful view of all the posterior fossa here, vertebral artery, 11, 10, 9, basal artery, this um, eye cut, arterial uh, acoustic facial bundle, six feet at pounds. So here we can also go further. We cut the, the, the tentorium, we close the superior petrosa sinus, we identify the temporal lobe, and then you see we can reach the third cranial nerve. And then this is the dendis vein, this is the fifth cranial nerve, this is the, the, the cavernous area here. And then you see, you can go also anteriorly to the trigeminal nerve. And what are the tumors that can be removed? This is a chordoma, the larger part of the this tumor is in the middle fossa, he passing the channel to the Meckel scale, this is in the posterior fossa, this is a axial, this is a coronal view. The patient had the six cranial nerve preoperatively. The hearing was normal. Look how beautiful is it just the day after. You see this is the craniotomy, orbital zygomatic. This is the retrolab subtemporal, transapical. You see the corridor of the apical compartment and all the tumor has been removed. The hearing has been preserved. Facial nerve six was paralyzed. Facial nerve not normal, but then after, you see after one year, the healing has been per, uh, preserved and the six cranial nerve returned to the normal after five years. You see, how can we remove a very difficult tumor, space not for the size, but the location, if we combine the ideas of remove the bone and leave the brain alone? Now, you know that Fish introduced the infratemporal force approaches, type B, C, and D also, type A, which is not the case here. And then here you see all the bone that can be removed in order to reach this area. So in green is signed what all the bone that can be removed. We extended very down to the occipital condyle here. This is a modification of the fish approach. 
in order to, to avoid recurrences, which are here. And then you see here that we have a displaced the mandible anteriorly. This is the uh, a tube of uh, intubation. And then you can control all the carotid up to the anterior foramen lacerum. This is the facial nerve in place, the sigmoid and jugular bulb. Okay, this is the, the, the section in the cadaver. This is the incision, the skin, external auditory canal, which has been transected. We close the external canal, cool the sac. Then here, the zygomatic arch. This is the facial nerve, mastoid tip. This is the, the gastric muscle. We can even go very far posteriorly here in order to reach the area of the condyle. The section of the middle uh, ear and the mastoid, that is very, very, very normal. This is the facial nerve, this is the zygomatic arch. And then this bone must be removed in order to uh, leave, to free the, the brain and not to do any pressure on the brain. Here, the zygomatic arch is in place, middle fossa, cochlea, carotid. This bone is a spongy bone that you can go under the cochlea, under the carotid, they go anteriorly, facial nerve in place. And then this is the middle meningeal artery here. We cut the middle meningeal artery. The carotid has been uh, dissected. This is the eustachian tube. Then here, very large approach anteriorly to the carotid here, to the retropha retropharyngeal area. Now we remove the zygomatic arch with the bone, and then you see how large is the approach. And please look, no any brain retraction, facial nerve, carotid, eustachian tube, third cranial nerve, middle fossa. If we need, we can transect the tentorium and the inferior petrolus, superior petrolus spinal, and then to get inside. Then we can go even further anteriorly. We cut the trigeminal nerve. This is the eustachian tube. Here is the pterygoid uh, uh, bone. This is the V2. This is the carotid. This is the sorry, uh, eustachian tube. And this is the carotid. Now we remove the pterygoid bone. We leave the VT intact. On us, the pterygoid bone has been removed. We get it to the sphenoid sinus. It seems about why you are going to the sphenoid? Because tumor of the bone, of the temporal bone, can get into the sphenoid, as I show you later on. Then this is, uh, the sphenoid has been open here. The rhinopharynx has been open, did a vomer, and you see how large a process so that all the tumor, for example, uh, tumor that are resistant with the residual after radiotherapy for carcinoma of the station tube can be removed in one block laterally. And then the idea is the carotid, this is the uh, anterior foramen lacerum, this is the uh, cavernous sinus. And uh, this is one, this is simple. This is a cholesterol granuloma of the petrograph. Uh, generally, we do not open if they don't have symptoms. This patient had a progressive six cranial nerve palsy. So we decide to remove the tumor through infratemporal fossa type B. We are closing the external auditory canal cul de sac. Then we, uh, we suture the canal and then we put the dissection here. We, in generally, we don't cut the trigeminal nerve if not very far anterior. Necessary. Here is the, the facial nerve. This is the right ear. The carotid start to appear. This is the carotid. And then you see here, this is the, the tissue, pathologic tissue, anterior to the carotid. Here is the carotid artery. And then you see it's very it's organized uh, cholesterol granuloma. And there is no way to treat this type of cholesterol granuloma, not to the infracochlear and not the uh, sub subfacial, because it's necessary to dissect the, the facial nerve inferiorly, pass under the facial nerve, anteriorly to the carotid, medially, and the, you see the carotid is here, this is the carotid, this is the, the, the capsule of the tumor, we can call it tumor because it's very large and it erodes the bone, it, it provokes the six cardiac nerve palsy, and carotid is completely dissected here. And uh, here it is practically finished. And then you see once it is finished, we control sometimes with endoscope, we clean with the, with the cottonoids, 
and then we suture the, the eustachian tube in order to avoid any ascending infection, carotid, cochlear, uh, facial nerve, uh, cochlear labyrinth. Okay, this is the first stop, this is the facial nerve. And this is another one, this is a chondrosarcoma. You see the carotid vertical is eroded. The inferior clivus is eroded, part of the middle clivus. And then this is the, this is the carotid here, and this is the tumor. Then you did uh, uh, what you, you see, uh, pre-labyrinth, no, pre-sigmoid, retro-labyrinthine, uh, under the facial nerve, and we have dissected all the carotid here uh, in one, and then we removed everything in one piece. And then here is the, the closure. You see, you can displace the carotid anteriorly, and then we close the uh, cavity with bone, with the, with the uh, abdominal fat and muscle. So this is the post-op, beautiful view, you see here. And then this and after five of six years, has not any, any residual tumor. You see, very nice, like, acceptable facial nerve. I think it has Blackman too. Now, the pre-auricular approach now to intratemporal fossa type D. You see the pre-auricular, it starts in the tribus at the, at the level just under the zygoma. You go as a question mark very long here. Then we cut the di this diagomatic process. Then we put these holes in order to be the suture. This is the pre-orbital, this is the orbit. Then we dissect all, the, all this bone, this is the zygomatic root, temporalis muscle. Here is the, all the dura. Then we go and we identify VU2, VU3, middle meningeal artery. We need to cut the middle meningeal artery and the VU3. And then you see a bigger magnification of beautiful view of the branches of the of the of the um, trigeminal nerve. This is a, um, um, foramen ovalis, foramen rotundus, foramen spinosum. We cut here everything, the middle meningeal artery, and then you have all the approaches to the carotid vertical and the horizontal carotid. We remove the petrus apex. And you see here, we get to the sphenoid. This is the carotid has been displaced superiorly and anteriorly. Here we have V1, we have the carotid, we have the six, sphenoid, this is the clivus, this is the vidian nerve, and then this is one of the cases that can be removed. This is a trigeminal nerve. The carotid is inside. So that you see from this axial view or the coronal view, that we need to remove all the bone lateral to the eye, to the orbit, and then lateral here. So we have to reach the sphenoid sinus here, we have to reach the ethmoid sinus and to control the carotid. The approach you see here at the CAT scan, the epitrus apex is completely invaded, the maxillary, uh, and then you see here the clivus, part of the upper clivus and middle clivus is completely eroded. Then we did the pre-auricular approach the temporalis muscle. We cut the zygoma. We did a very large craniotomy. And then this is the post-op, look. Uh, this is the article, the mandible. You see here lateral tangential to the orbit here. We have reconstructed the orbit here. We have reconstructed the bone. All the tumor has been removed uh, in one stage. Now, the trans time transapical subtemporal approach, what does it mean? It means that we combine the trans time approach, classic of ours, but we extended this approach with a transapical extension, which means we remove the apical compartment in order to be able to remove the tumor, at, which are anterior to the internal auditory canal, a pre pontine system. Uh, this is the, what we mean the transapical extension. You see translabyrinthine approach has been accomplished, but you see the, all the bone between the flow of the internal auditory canal and the petrus apex is removed uh, 360 degree around the internal auditory canal, the same superiorly is the vestibule. And you see how much bone has been removed here. By the way, we don't use anymore the bis bar, but the superior um, uh, ampullary nerve. Now the dissection, Continue anteriorly to the, the trigeminal nerve. It's continuing anteriorly to the internal auditory canal. 
we remove this bone, we displace uh, slightly the, the, the internal auditory canal contents, and then you get to control this the pica, no, this is the scar, this is the basilar artery. And you see, you get it to the basil, to the mid clivus, this is the scar, this is the basilar, this is the prep, this is the, uh, pontine arteries, and then you see that they must be preserved, of course. But you see here, you see the contralateral trigeminal nerve. We can continue to dissect falling the trigeminal nerve to the Merkel scale, and you get into the Merkel scale. You know that the posterior, um, um, the meningioma or posterior surface of the petrous bone, they get very often into the Merkel scale here. So there is a very bloody uh, surgery, but if you get there, you can remove the tumor preserving the trigeminal nerve. Here is the basal artery. You see how large is the control of the prepontine system, which cannot be obtained with a simple uh, translab approach. What, what do we mean by transapical? You see this black hole, this bone, this is the apical compartment. Uh, in, with the normal translab, we don't remove this. But if you remove this, then you can get tangentially to the most anterior part of the tumor that is attached to the basal artery and to the, uh, uh, the, the prepontine system. One of the indications is very, it is dermoid. This is dermoid uh, passed to the Merkel scale. And then this is the post-op. You see retrolab, uh, no, translab, transapical extension and removing uh, the part of all this bone. And then the, the, the malformation. And you see here, no, any day, the day after the surgery, no lesions of the cerebellum, no lesion of the uh, brainstem. Now the transortic has been introduced by, by Hugo Fisch. We have practically abandoned this because we have substituted with transapical extension, but sometimes can be used when the jugula boob is very high. So this is a classic trans uh, transapical, uh, sorry, transortic, this is the carotid, is the geniculate ganglion, but I have added the transapical extension here. Generally, it's not need to remove the external auditory canal, but if we, if the bulb is very high, then in order to, make, to have a, a little more uh, space here between the carotid and the posterior fossa, then we remove it. Then you see control the 10th, the 9th, vertebral, lateral, uh, contralateral, vertebral, homolateral, basal artery, 6th cranial nerve, trigeminal nerve. And then you see here a beautiful view of the lower cranial nerves, the 12th, uh, the pica, the 11, and then this is the basilar. Look here, you can control all the, this area from the trigeminal nerve, fourth cranial nerve, SCA, is the dentist vein, all this area is under control. And this is one case, for example, because it's very high uh, extended, very, very anteriorly extended. You see, we must remove this part of bone. It seems insignificant, but in the skull base, few millimeters means a few, many, many centimeters. We did it as a stage procedure because he had a vital sign during the surgery, but the second stage, totally tumor due removal. So combined approach, transotic versus infratemporal for B for the chondrosarcoma. You see the lesions, it, it erodes all the bone, it goes up to the mid clivus, uh, to the carotid, and then you see the dissection. This carotid completely dissected is anterior to the carotid, facial nerve, posterior to the facial nerve. You see, we pass under the facial nerve, under the carotid, you reach the petrous apex. And this is the post op, completely removed without any visions. This is a special type, combined transotic infratemporal type A approach. Huge cholesteatoma. It has eroded completely the mid clivus. It goes almost to the upper clivus. This is the carotid artery, which is pushed superiorly. And then it goes from the mastoid up down to the petrous apex, down to the clivus. So that you see with the bone windows, now the sphenoid sinus and the tumoid is occupied by the tumor. Here is the sphenoid, all the bone is gone. So we need to remove all this bone in order to get this anteriorly. How can we do this? We can do this through the um, combined approach, infratemporal, transotic. So this is the middle ear. This is the facial nerve. This is sigmoid sinus. 
is just the beginning of the tumor. Then we dissect the facial nerve and then we displace the facial nerve anterior, rerouting of the facial nerve. Facial nerve has been anteriorly rerouted here. Then we suture with the tissue of the stylomastoid foramen. Then we start to remove all the cholesteatoma. The dura posterior force and middle force was completely uncovered. We will need now to remove the cochlea because it's uncontrollable in that area and to control the carotid, which is here. So the cochlea now is removed here. Then here we have to dissect the carotid, this is the carotid, so that we remove all the, you see pulsating carotid is here, we remove all this bone. And then here is the internal auditory canal. You see how large is the cholesteatoma. Carotid is here, this is the carotid. The dura is, the posterior force is pulsating. We try not to open the dura in order to avoid CSF leak, but even, even if you open the dura, then we can, you have to close the eustachian tube with suture, as we see later on. You see here carotid, this is the dura posterior fossa. We, we clean now all the carot, all the dura. We have to be very careful. This is the, the, this is the carotid, this is the area of the precavenous area of the carotid. We are drilling superiorly to the internal auditory canal. <coughs> now under the, the jugular bulb, we clean all the caro all the dura, you see? And then we try to clean in one piece in order not to leave remnants. Of course, this case has to be controlled with the follow-up with the magnetic resonance imaging DW I non-epi. We pass under the carotid if you need. We drill bone anterior to the carotid and then we displace the carotid anterior. Now we are drilling anterior to the carotid. We remove all this bone. And then this is the eustachian tube here. Now you, you displace the carotid anteriorly. We clean everything here. And then you see the last piece of cholesteatoma. And then we get into the spheroid sinus. Look, you've seen, this is the spheroid sinus. Now, once we are sure that we have removed the macroscopically everything, we close the sphenoid sinus with the muscle, not with the fat, in order not to be infected. We displace the mucosa uh, medially, and then we put uh, muscle and then fat, and then we close the approach. In this case, he had the facial nerve grade two, even with displacement. And then, and then this is, uh, what is this? Okay, this is the post-op, you see? You see, I've reached the archivus. This is the axial view, coronal view, and then here, everything has been removed. Now, the modified transcochlear approach. Uh, the transcochlear approach comes, as you know, from Los Angeles. We have modified the approach, uh, removing the external auditory canal. And uh, as you see here, this is the type A, the cranial fossa, the stereo fossa, jugular bulb, carotid up to the boot tree, uh, anterior displacement. We can control the horizontal portion of the carotid up to the uh, cavernous sinus here. The, the mandible is displaced uh, inferiorly and then the uh, facial nerve displaced posteriorly. So this is the carotid. This is the facial nerve, tubular bulb, internal auditory canal, geniculate ganglion, greater superficial petrosal nerve, internal auditory canal, we cut the greater superficial petrosal nerve. Then we displace the facial nerve posteriorly. You see that there is no middle ear so that we can dissect the cochlea, the carotid freely. Then we can remove the clivus here and the apical compartment, vertical, genu, horizontal, precavenous area. This is the middle fossa. Then here is one of the, the these cases was already operated through the retrosigmoid approach. And then this very few months later, you, know, you see practically they did what I call enlarged biopsy. This case has, has also very high jugular bulb here. You see it's immediately to the jugular bulb. So we decided to do a transcochlear approach. The facial nerve was grade six. So we, 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 we removed the facial nerve that was already grade six. We removed all the bone. Medially to the carotid, 
and to the epical compartment. This is the jugular bone here. Uh, the carotid is here, and oh, this is the carotid. So we remove all the bone between jugular bone and carotid. All this bone must be removed before opening the dura in order that to be able to open the dura to, to, lead, to release the CSF leak you know there is no any uh, pressure on the on, of the brain then we open the dura and then with the bulk we start to the bulk of the tumor you see there is no bleeding we operated with so-called bloodless technique we have a special bipolar uh, which is a resonance bipolar it cuts and coagulates at the same time and you see there is no bleeding at all zero and then we put cottonoid over the brain stem in order not to, to damage the brain stem. Uh, you see, uh, did the brain stem very, very clean, no damage, no bleeding. A cottonoid over the brain stem, we coagulate over the tumor and protecting the brain stem with the cottonoids, we can remove everything without any damage, absolutely any damage to the brain stem. This is a very, you see the cottonoid protecting the brain stem. We push with the cotonoid with the suction irrigation, the brachma suction irrigation. Then we reduce the tumor progressively, the bulk in the tumor, until total removal is accomplished. You see, pulsating perfectly, pulsating. These are cotonoids protecting the brain stem. And then the last piece of tumor, which is here, of course, we remove everything. We don't think it's a worthwhile to do subtotal removal especially when young, young dog. You see the arachnoid perfectly preserved. And then you see how nice is this bipolar. This basal is bipolar, it's been developed in our center. Now we remove all the cotonoids, we control the bleeding, it look perfectly, this section. No bleeding at all, nothing. But this is a pressure of the tumor of the brain, of the cerebellum. Uh, uh, and then is the post-op. You, it was, uh, no, post-op. It was the previous retrosigmoid by a neurosurgeon. You see how large the approach, uh, it has completely obliterated with abdominal part. And what happens when, he, when the patient is operated three times, four times by the neurosurgeon? Look, he has no, no any more cerebellum, but he has the tumor. And the correct carotid is completely compressed. He has total facial palsy. He has a blind in this, uh, in this eye. It was considered inoperable. I think that is easy, so easy surgery. We did total removal. You see transcochlear approach with the transepical extension. This is very important. The epical compartment, you see this part, is completely gone by dream. And then this was what was done by the neurosurgeon. Now, modified transcochlear approach type B is extension anteriorly, the zygomatic arch, is the, the mandible, this is the craniotomy, very large. And then you see here the mandible, you see it's tangential to the base of the skull. And then this is the carotid, so that we combine translab, transcochlear, subtemporal, transapical here. And then we cut the middle meningeal artery, the V3, we cut the V3, and then we have to drill this bone. And then we get immediately to the sphenoid sinus, we control the vertical, horizontal, genu, pre, uh, the, the carotid at the um, anterior foramen lacerum. This is the precavernous carotid. This is V2. This is a sphenoid and the eustachian tube. And then you see this is the carotid, precavernous carotid. So if you remove this bone, you get here in the sphenoid side. You see the bigger magnification this is the vomer, this is the nasal fossa. This is phenoid. So carotid vertical, genu, uh, anterior foramen lacerum, precavernous carotid. And then again, we go further to the cavernous sinus here. And then this is a, a case of a trigeminal neuroma in the middle force and posterior force extended to the cavernous sinus here, uh, uh, retro orbital. It has been considered inoperable that neurosurgeon, neurosurgeon, he sent me this case. And we did this very large approach. He has already facial palsy. You see this is a craniotomy, middle fossa, sigmoid, retrosigmoid. And then this is the tumor here once the door has been opened. And then you see here, we saw the trigeminal nerve, homolateral. This is the six cranial nerve. This is the 
basal artery, this the uh, mid clavus, the clavus, and then you see the contralateral trigeminal here, contralateral six cranial nerve, post op. You see, practically it was the, the retrosigmoid by the nervous surgeon in the transcochlear orbital zygomatic because we remove all these tumors. So we go tangential to the orbit, to the upper and middle clavus, to the old, the petrous bone has been removed, and you see here, practically completely removed and reconstructed. And this is another trigeminal nerve in NF2. Uh, you see the brain stem completely compressed. And then you did a, a combined approach. You did a transagomatic. And then this is the post-op. We did in this case a stenting the carotid because it was completely inside. You see, look, brain stem and cerebellum and nothing. So what can we give you as a, as a message to take home? The petrous apex is a very complex area. And these lesions involving this area can be centered directly on the petrous apex and can be reached uh, through uh, the particular approaches and we have to consider the contiguity with the other structures. Sometimes the preoperative radiology is not sufficient for diagnosis. So the surgical approach depends on many factors. Uh, the carotid artery, the lower the cranial nerves, the brain and the brain stem involvement and the size of the disease. Small lesion centered to the petrous apex without massive carotid involvement and the normal function can be operated uh, both endoscopic approach and middle fossa transpetrous approach. I don't really believe very much in endoscopic approach, but a, a retrolab subtemporal transapic approach always extra dural is very important. In case of a carotid involvement, the infratemporal force approach type B allows complete control and safe immobilization of this uh, very important ar uh, artery. In case of a tumor extended in both posterior fossa and the petrous apex, lab with the transapical extension and sometimes transotic it can be recommended. The transcochlear approach should be selected only when there is a very huge tumor anterior located with the facial parts already preoperative. And you are welcome to the uh, our lab, 20 places. I have named the Bill House Laboratory because I have to thank Bill for everything and the group pathological. These are one of the books that we have published with the dissection of the temporal bone and the base of the skull, and it has been translated in Chinese. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Mario, as always, uh, it's beautiful work, really beautiful. Um, uh, you, you show us how so many areas of the prepontine cistern and the base of the skull are accessible. Um, I'm looking for questions. I have a question for you, even though I think I know the answer because you and I are on the same page. How do you feel about radio surgery for uh, acoustic neuroma? May I be unpolite? Please. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, uh, not, but I say this uh, based on data. Yeah. We are following uh, follow up 1,300 cases for 10 years. 75% of the cases, they do not grow at all, zero. Some of others, they grow, but very, very small grow. And that this, this patient that grow, uh, we give to the patient the choice between surgery and radiotherapy, but only after a sufficient follow-up period. You know, the radiotherapist, they see a patient and they see immediately irradiate immediately. They immediately irradiate. So they, the tumor stops, it doesn't grow, but it doesn't grow not because of being irradiated, but because of a natural history of the tumor. If they want to demonstrate that the radiotherapy is, is effective, they must follow the patient for years. And then only after that, eventually irradiate the tumor that they grow and they compare the results with surgery. Thank you. Are there other questions from the audience? 